Welcome to the Master Your Life podcast. I'm your host, Julie Kelly. I believe in living your most inspired and fulfilled life by knowing exactly who you are, knowing what's important to you, and making no apologies for it. This show is a weekly dose of inspired motivation, personal development, and success strategies designed to create the career, relationships, and lifestyle of your dreams. Imagine waking up every day to your dream life. Well, imagine no more, as each podcast episode is designed to help you live your most authentic life with ease and proven principles that actually get results. I'm the founder of the Master Your Life online course, international motivational speaker, and I'll be sharing real, relevant, tactical advice in this unfiltered, transformational podcast. Things are about to get fabulous. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello and welcome to the Master Your Life podcast. It is Julie here and I have to tell you that I have missed you. I am so sorry that I missed last week's podcast recording. Life has been a whirlwind. It's been crazy challenging and I didn't want to put up a podcast episode just for the sake of putting one up and rush through it. And so I'm so sorry, but I missed last week. So for my followers who are waiting every week for a podcast, I apologize. Please forgive me, but I'm back today and I'm so excited to be here with you, albeit virtually. And today's podcast episode to me feels like a big hug. I wanted to give you a big virtual hug to help you get through what is an extremely challenging year and a challenging time, especially moving into the holidays. I know me personally, I've had highs, I've had lows, and I've had neutral days. Um, and each day is it's like a you know a lucky dip. We just never know what life's going to present us with. And we don't know what we're going to need to pull out of our toolkit to deal with that challenge or that unexpectedness. And so today, I really wanted to just give you a simple podcast episode that helps you just feel good, helps you feel better, lifts your spirits, and just helps you get through the next couple of months of this year and obviously into the new year. And like I said, the holidays are approaching and for many people that in itself is a difficult and challenging time for various reasons. And so I think today's episode is really going to resonate with most people and I hope that it gives you some solace, some place to sit and just be comfortable and safe in and gives you some ideas of how to just feel good and better look after yourself in the coming months. So the title of the podcast today is how to feed your mind, body and soul in a pandemic. All right. So I wanted to break it down for you today. And let's take each topic like mind, body and soul and talk about what that looks like. So how do you feed your mind during a pandemic? So I think it's essential that we all spark and stimulate our minds on a daily basis. And for each of you, it's going to be something different. But let me give you some ideas because I always like to give you the ideas so you know how to actually implement these ideas rather than just listening to a concept or hearing a concept for the first time. So you need to find what works for you. For each of these categories, I'm going to give you some ideas, but you need to you know, work out for yourself what sparks your mind, what stimulates your mind, what makes you think differently, what challenges your thinking process, or even what challenges your philosophies and ideologies of life, right? That is definitely sparking your mind. So you could do that by reading. And, you know, say to say reading is one thing, but maybe read something that you wouldn't normally read for instance, right? Read something that will challenge you or teach you something new, okay? 
you could obviously listen to a podcast just like this. And again, we all sort of have our default settings, right? We have our defaults of what we like to eat, what we where, what we like to wear, where we like to go, what TV shows we enjoy. And so again, I challenge you to think about maybe listening to a podcast that you would never normally listen to, right? And just pick a random episode and listen and just be in that moment and appreciate what's being shared with you and whether you agree with it or not it's irrelevant it's just a matter of sparking your mind for others it might be writing so if you're somebody that likes to express themselves in a written form think about how you could write is it journaling is it writing a poem is it maybe writing an article for a local newspaper is it writing a blog is it being a guest blogger for somebody else's website somebody else's company and business right so go like that one step further go one step outside of your comfort zone with all of these ideas so that you are challenged Another way to spark and stimulate your mind is to learn something new. And I know there are tons of different um, companies now that have online courses that they're offering for free because of the pandemic. So it takes a little research. It takes a little you know, due diligence to work it out. But you could easily learn some new skills or just do something completely random just for the sake of learning something new. Now, if you're in the United States, for instance, you could take the time to read through all the propositions that are coming up in our election in a couple of weeks time. And me personally, I'm a, a new brand new US citizen. Actually, if you didn't know that already, I became a US citizen in February. And so this year is the first year that I'm allowed to actually vote. And I've lived in the United States for 13 years now, and I've never had this opportunity and this this privilege and so I took it upon myself this weekend to read through all the ballot paperwork that was sent to me read through every single pop proposition you know the pros and cons of each so that I could make an, an informed decision now that was something I would never normally do right but that's something else that you could think about if you are in the United States have you read those propositions do you even know what any of them mean do you have a stance on them and whether you're going to choose to vote or not it's just as another way to spark and stimulate your mind and get thinking about different things that may be important to you so the whole point of this particular area of sparking and stimulating you stimulating your mind is to do something new to challenge the way you think, to challenge the way you perceive things, to challenge the way you understand certain topics. So I want you to think about what that is for you and make a list. Okay, we're going to make lists for each one of our areas of mind, body and soul. So make a list of the different ways that you could spark and stimulate your mind daily and then you need to schedule at least 10 to 15 minutes. That's all it takes every single day to engage in that activity that you've chosen from your list so that you are sparking and stimulating your mind every single day. All right. The next one is our bodies. So how do we feed our bodies in a pandemic and I don't mean that literally because um, if you're like me you probably put on a couple of pandemic pounds <laughs> and so um, how do we feed our bodies in different ways so feeding your body and moving your body is really what we're talking about here is a really powerful way to get you out of a mental funk if you're feeling overwhelmed or if you're feeling stuck and feeling just the heaviness of this current situation choosing to move your body and preferably moving and doing an activity outdoors is an extraordinary way to actually spark your mind and get you out of that funk as at the same time as moving your body and so depending on where you live right now you may or may not be able to do activities outdoors but if you can, lucky you, <laughs> I would absolutely capitalize on that gift that you have right now and get outside and do something for at least 30 minutes a day. Okay, so I'll give you an example. For me personally, I've started doing Kundalini yoga classes again. I took a break for a while, but I started it up again and I just remembered how much I love it and how 
it helps my mind, body and soul when I do just 30 minutes of Kundalini yoga. And there are tons and tons and tons and tons, almost an unlimited amount of free classes available on YouTube, right? So this doesn't have to cost you a penny. So think about what you like to do and then just do a little YouTube search and see what you can find. And I literally put in Kundalini Yoga 30 minutes and I do the same Kundalini Yoga class most of the week because for me, I need to like perfect it before I move on to the next type of class. And that's all I personally need, for instance, right? I don't, I don't want to be doing something crazy and advanced. I do a very simple beginner's class and that's all I need for right now. Once I've perfected that, I'll move on to something else. So think about what it is for you. Is it a Kundalini Yoga class on, on YouTube or a Pilates class on YouTube? Maybe it's just walking your dog, the family dog. And if you have a family, do it as a family. What a brilliant way to get out of the house, get the kids out, get some fresh air, release some tension, you know, have a few laughs along the way and walk the dog, get the poor dog outside as well. Um, you know, other ideas could be shooting hoops in the backyard. Maybe you have a basketball ring set up in your backyard. Go and shoot hoops or shoot hoops with the kids if you have kids. Do that. Make that a fun little family thing as well. Or it could be something as simple as like skipping rope. Right? When was the last time you skipped rope? <laughs> right? But that's something that doesn't cost a lot of money. You can do it pretty much anywhere. You can do it inside or you could do it outside. And if that's all too much, even something as simple as 30 minutes of stretching a day. And again, if you're lost for ideas, just hop on YouTube, Google it, and you will have too many options, in fact, to choose from. So you don't have to come up with the routines. You just have to be a little bit, um, you know, proactive and find these free classes and free YouTube classes online. And so again, Commit to at least 30 minutes a day and schedule it. It's absolutely important that you schedule these allocations for your mind, your body and your soul into your calendar because if they're not scheduled, they won't get done. And we schedule all our work activities, right? All our work commitments without a second thought because we have to do those things. But guess what? You also have to look after yourself right now. And that's the most important thing you have to do is right now is look after yourself. So again, make a list of all the things that you could do that would feed your body and then commit to 30 minutes a day and absolutely schedule it in your calendar. The last thing we need to do is find a way to feed our souls. And this is like the feel good the real yummy stuff, the, you know, the stuff that feels like wraps, you're wrapped up in a cloud or you know, in cotton balls kind of thing, right? So what is it for you? What are the things that you do that just make you feel good? They don't require much effort. They totally put a smile on your face. They make your heart smile, right? What are those things for you? And again, I'll give you my examples. So for me, I have a weekly Zoom or FaceTime call with two particular girlfriends and my little three-year-old niece that lives in Washington, D.C. When I get on Zoom calls with these three ladies in my life, I am beyond ecstatic. I'm so happy. I'm in my happy place. Nothing bothers me. All my troubles go away. And I don't care if it's a five minute or a 30 minute call, whatever I can get with each of these people makes me feel good. And it just reminds me of what's important in life right now. And to me, that's my family and my friends and quality time with them, even though I can't see them in person. Okay. Another couple of things that I do, if you didn't know this already about me, is I gratitude journal every day. And I, I'm a huge scrapbooker as well. I love to scrapbook. I'm very nostalgic. I love taking photos and printing photos and documenting photos and memories so that we can keep them for a lifetime and hand them down to generation after generation so that there's a log of our lives. There's a log of what we did and what happened and who we saw and the parties we went to, the christenings, the weddings, the pandemic stuff that we're going through. All of that stuff. I love to document that. And so I'm a, I'm a scrapbooker when it comes to things like that. And one thing else 
that I'm actually thinking about adding. And if this is something that you do, I would love to hear from you. I'm thinking about adding journaling, just general everyday journaling to my my soul routine. I'm not really a journaler beyond my gratitude journaling, but I'm talking about like full on journaling. Um, and this is something that I think I'm going to do just to cope with the challenges of life right now and to get my thoughts and my feelings out on paper so that I can sort of work through them better. And so I know that there's some prompts to journaling and these these may help you. So if you're somebody that does journal or is thinking about journaling, these are the sorts of prompts that I've found that seem to work. So what am I feeling? What's the story I'm telling myself? Huge. I'm going to do a, a podcast episode on this alone. What's the story I'm telling myself? And how much of this is actually real? Right? So these are the sorts of prompts that you can journal on. And then finally, what positives can I focus on instead? So this is just like a a brain dump, a journaling dump of how to process a particular feeling or something that happened so that it doesn't get to you. And it's almost like self-therapy in a way. So I'm thinking about adding journaling to my soul, my soul and self-care practice and routine. So whatever it is for you, it's really important that you make time for you without guilt and without judgment, okay? What we're going through is hard enough as it is. So again, I encourage you and invite you to make a list of the things that feed your soul and then choose one of those things and commit to it however long it takes, whether it's five minutes or 50 minutes. Schedule it in your calendar and commit to doing it daily, weekly, whatever it is for you, okay? And I think it's really important that we remember that we need to fuel and re-energize ourselves if we are to deal with the challenges that we are facing right now, right? So many of us are running on empty and feel depleted and overwhelmed, and we're trying to navigate our day-to-day lives in that state, and it doesn't work, It just doesn't work because it's absolutely impossible. Think about it. Think about your own life. It's impossible to make smart decisions or important choices when we are depleted, when we are emotionally, mentally, and or physically drained. It's just impossible to make important decisions in that state. So right now, you know, we need to be running on all cylinders to just to be able to keep up with our daily routines. And on top of that, our ever so changing daily routines and our changing lifestyles, as well as those difficult situations and those difficult challenges that pop out of nowhere and present themselves to us in the moment at any given time. Right, So it's really important that we do this and we do it without any judgment and without any guilt. And I want you to think about what that means to you. So let's recap. Again, we're going to think about different ways that we can feed our mind, our body and our soul. And we're going to make lists for each one of those things. So think about how you can spark and, and stimulate your mind make a list of all the different things that you would like to do or or could do or should do. The same thing for your body. How are you going to move your body on a daily basis and make a list of different things? And the same thing with your soul. How are you going to feed your soul? Make that list. And then right now, once you finish your list, pick one from each of your lists, one thing for your mind, one thing for your body, one thing for your soul, and schedule enough time for each one of those activities that you need to do daily or weekly and actually schedule it in your calendar and put an alert. And so when that the alert dings you and reminds you of the things that you need to do, make time for it. Do not make excuses. Do not talk yourself out of it because you think it's not important or it's irrelevant and something else is more important than you because I'm telling you right now there's nothing more important than you taking care of you right now because you are the pillar of your family 
You are that central pillar that everybody else relies on. And if you are not solid, if you are not fueled to the top, if you are not energized, if you are not running on all cylinders, how are you going to support everybody else that needs you right now? So it's vital that you take the time to look after yourself, to refuel, to re-energize and do the things that feed your mind, body and soul on a daily and weekly basis. Okay. And as you know, you have to commit, right? You have to commit to, to doing these things because the results come only from taking action. You know me, my motto is, you know, <laughs> knowledge without implementation equals nothing, right? I've talked about this a gajillion times. The results only come from taking action. So once you've got your list, you know which ones, which activities you're going to do this week, schedule them, commit to them, do them, and then mix them up, right? So once you, you're sort of over a particular activity, you've got your list, go back to your list, pick a new one, and, and again, go through the same thing, schedule it commit to it, do it and keep doing it until you're bored of it or sick of it, change it up and so on and so forth. Okay. And if you have a family, this is the perfect way to pass it forward, right? And pay it forward is to share this with your husband, your wife, your children, parents, in-laws, right? Do it as a family if you can and model the behavior that you want other people to to admire you for and to potentially do the same things as you're doing because you know they're empowering, you know they've helped you. So the best way to help other people is to model the behavior that you know that they should be doing as well. And so that's all I wanted to share with you today. I hope it gives you some comfort and gives you some ideas of how you can better look after yourself in the coming months during the holidays and moving into 2021 since we're in the final stretch of this year. Do you believe it? And as always, I invite you to subscribe, rate and review the podcast if you haven't already. And if you're new to the podcast, then welcome. And if you have not already heard the news, the Master Your Life podcast is now also available on Amazon Music. So if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can download the Amazon Music app for free and listen to podcasts and music for free. So search for the Master Your Life podcast on Amazon Music, subscribe over there. And if you aren't already following me on social media, I hang out on Instagram at Julie C. Kelly, and I would love to hear from you. So Please connect with me. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know what your routine is. If you already have a mind, body and soul routine in place, I would love to hear what that is because we all can learn from one another. So as always, my loves, I'm sending you much strength, many blessings, lots of love, and I will see you next week.